morning everybody we're in watertown south dakota we're at stone's truck stop it's a pretty big one i haven't gone inside yet but looks like there's quite a bit to do in there we got old blue here just turned her over getting her warmed up getting the blood moving we got this nice corner spot here sort of like a country country lot almost got some trees some forest I'm delivering this lumber today I'm gonna get this off my trailer and then I have a reload in Davenport Iowa that's taking me back home so as soon as old blues ready to go we'll be on the road raining I was just started raining as I was talking to you out there the joys of wearing glasses glasses and rain do not go together for those of you who've been following me for I guess more than a year uh, I only got my glasses about a year ago up until then I, I never wore glasses my eyes aren't that bad like, I still don't need need my glasses it just sharpens everything turns everything from you know HD into 4k or from 720 into 4k or I don't know but keeping these things clean that has been that has been a challenge for those of you who don't wear glasses and are getting glasses soon it is a constant struggle constant who knew when you take them away from the eyeglasses shop or the, where you buy them and you first put them on, they will never have that same razzle-dazzle. They will never have that same clarity. You take them home and the, the first speck of dust that gets on them is only the first of millions and billions and trillions. It never ends. And then eventually they start getting scratched and you're so careful yet you don't know how they got so scratched. And, I have like multiple different like levels of cloths to clean them. I have the cloths like that just to, you know, lightly get the water droplets off them. And then there's another microfiber that I use to clear the dust off of them. Then there's another microfiber that you got to use to get that like grease because you get grease off your face onto the glasses. You got to get that, that off there too. Then there's all these different products you can use to spray on there. There's these like little wet nappies, wet naps that you use to clean them and sterilize them. And it's a whole ordeal glasses I'm I don't mind them I kind of like seeing everything in like 4k so it's it's all right you get used to them you get used to them after a while but the first time when I put them on I was like whoa kind of made me dizzy and like well, it made me nauseous for a while it seemed like whenever I'd move my head this way everything would warp and for some reason now, now it doesn't do that anymore it, eh, it is what it is okay let's get out there I uh, just got to get a coffee ready here. Let's go get this freight off my trailer so I can put new freight on it and go home. Right, let's get going. It's going to be a good day. Let's do a little tug test, make sure my trailer's definitely attached. I looked and it was attached, but now I tried it. It's definitely attached. This truck stop is huge. It's really nice. They got a casino in there, a lounge, laundromat, obviously a regular like convenience store like most truck stops. They got fuel here. I don't know if they accept uh, all fuel cards here. Not sure which fuel cars they accept. I didn't fuel here. But it's a very nice place, very clean, very well kept. Obviously have owners that care about their business. driveway anywhere so no one's looking at me funny or yelling at me not to go here so here we go drove pretty late last night so we're getting a later start this morning that's usually how my schedule ends up I usually drive late into the night and then uh, start when the Sun comes up or after 
after the sun is already up. I know it's a better schedule to start before the sun because then you end earlier and you can get a better parking spot. But in my region where I am here, Take the entrance to the left on I-29 South. In my region where I am here, there's usually plenty of parking. season down here. Nice and warm. It's like 20 degrees Celsius here. It's amazing. So I'm at this massive facility. I don't really know where I'm supposed to go. Follow me. Hello. All right. Sounds good. Swing left to go right. All right. <laughs> and there we go. I have an empty trailer. And I've slid my fifth wheel back to my preferred position. Not quite all the way to the back, but close to the center of my axles. A little bit off center to the rear on this, but that's okay. All right. My reload is in Davenport, 500 kilometers from here, or 300 miles. About half a day, I'm gonna try to get there today yet. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. I want to say I'm going to make it, but, uh, oh, I only have, I only have two hours and 44 minutes left of driving time? How does that work? It took a lot longer to get here than I thought. Shoot. We better get going then. I have to load there at 11 a.m. tomorrow. And, uh, and then I have to book it home. I've gotta be home, not tomorrow, but the next day by the afternoon because our dogs have important uh, vaccine appointments or they have to go and get their annual shots, right? How did I drive that much today? I don't, I only drove what? I gotta figure out what's going on here. Well, I drove 447 kilometers today, so with half a day, I should have more time. Oh, there it is. Five hours and forty-four minutes. Okay, uh, my my thirty hour uh, thirty hour my thirty minutes hadn't clicked over yet. I was at twenty-nine minutes here. Once I stop for my half-hour break because of U.S. hours of service, then I get the rest of my eleven hours of driving. I just jumped the gun. I panicked. I panicked. <laughs> yeah, where did all my time go? It didn't take me that long to get here, did it? Okay. Five hours, 44 minutes left of driving time now. Makes more sense. 
Oh, I have six hours and 20 minutes left in which I can drive that time. So I have a little bit of time uh, to go fuel up. We're going to get all the way to Davenport, hopefully find a parking spot. Get loaded tomorrow. And then go home just like that. Well, I'm the only one getting fuel apparently. We're all fueled up now. I don't have to worry about being overweight because of my fuel, so I can fill up the tanks all the way to the top. This is Loves in Valley, Nebraska. Lots of parking spots here, but uh, we're not staying here. We've got to go about another five hours down the road yet towards Davenport. So when I get back, I'm going to have to take uh, the truck back to the shop to get uh, my visor secured a little bit better. You can see I've got a one-inch strap in there. The wind is grabbing it. The way it's mounted, the wind is grabbing it and it's pulling it off the cab and it's making it go brrrr and sort of uh, making this piece in there bump against my windshield because that's just pressed against my windshield. And uh, the wind is catching it and causing it to shake too much. So I secured it more with this little one inch strap and it fixed the problem perfectly. But I can't leave it like that. It just doesn't look right. I don't like the way it looks, but it's doing the job, right? Can't even really tell. Right? Can you? I guess you can. Now that you're looking at it, of course, now you can tell. But yeah, I'll get them to adjust that as soon as I can when we get back. Just needs a uh, extra couple of bolts. We'll see, they'll figure something out. It's too bad. I mean, I really like the way it looks. It turned out great and I love the visor. I just didn't want the visor to get damaged by the wind because South Dakota had crazy wind this morning. And it kept it brrr, fluttering in the wind. I didn't want it to suddenly brrr, you know? <laughs> That's not good. So I tried this method, just secured it, sort of like pushing it against the windshield. Perfect, didn't even budge, didn't even move a little bit. So I solved the problem, but uh, not permanently. That's on the list of things to do. All right. Let's go, let's go, enough chatting. on the right side in 20 meters we are pulling up to the world's largest truck stop how do i get in here ah truck entrance nice big sign right there ha, right in front of me iowa 80 exit 284 have arrived at your destination on the right side Iowa 80 truck stop I already beat you to it I told them where we are but thanks this place is awesome and I'm guessing there should definitely be parking here for me Have to wander around a little bit till we find one. I 
This place is a trucker's paradise. No, you know what? It's not even paradise, it's heaven. Trucker heaven. Hands down the best truck stop in the world. It's also the biggest, or so they claim. I'm not gonna dispute that claim, because it's pretty big. Look at that, they got a truck inside the truck stop. Can you see that? We'll drive you right past here. Look at that, it's got all the green LEDs on it. I don't know if the camera's picking that up or not. They have a semi truck inside the truck stop. Oh, and there's a parking spot right here too. You're right. Nice. Like seriously, look at this parking spot. Look at this. That's the building right there. Like, it doesn't get any better than this. I checked, it's not even a reserve or paid spot, nothing. It was just open right out into the driveway there, so it's nice and easy. These guys have an easy out in the morning so that they don't hit me. It's like it was meant to be. That is so awesome. And you see that truck in there now? The camera doesn't zoom in as much as I'd like it to, but I can get a different lens for that if I want. Right up front. Like parking does not get any better than this, right at the building. <laughs> I don't know exactly how many parking spots are at uh, the world's largest truck stop here. But I'm guessing it's more than anywhere else. I'm actually going to go and grab my tarps from back here and move them up to the front of my trailer. I don't like them being all the way back here, though it's very well lit here. I still don't like having my tarps all the way back here. I don't like leaving my tarps in the back of the trailer. I like bringing them to the front to discourage thieves. I've never had a tarp stolen before. I've never had anything like that happen to me before. But it's at the back of my trailer. I feel like that would be a lot easier for thieves to mess with them than if it was right behind my cab. Because I fear they'd have to climb up on my truck, get on the trailer, at least climb up on the trailer, and I'd most likely feel that inside the truck. There we go. Now they're right behind my cab. And it'd be much harder to sneak up on here. Because I feel everything inside my truck. 